this patient is a 20 years old uh, man who suffered a left uh, posterior temporal intraparenchymal hemorrhage uh, um, and uh, an MRI uh, demonstrated what uh, appeared to be an arteriovenous malformation as a source of hemorrhage. Uh, we uh, performed a cerebral angiogram uh, that confirmed that he had an arteriovenous malformation in the left uh, posterior temporal region um, with evidence of venous ectasias. Um, it was determined that this was the source of hemorrhage and we uh, proceeded with embolization in preparation for surgical resection of the ADM. Um, as part of the workup, we did an uh, angiogram of the external carotid artery that demonstrated that there was no supply to the uh, arteriovenous uh, malformation. Uh, we did a contralateral carotid injection that did not show uh, evidence of arteriovenous shunting. And we also checked uh, the posterior circulation. As you can see, the right vertebral artery injection that uh, doesn't show any uh, significant supplies of the malformation. Uh, we proceeded with uh, navigating uh, microcatheter into the ADM nidus. We had a, a benchmark catheter as a, our guide in the distal cervical uh, ICA. Uh, we had an intermediate catheter at DAC 38 uh, for support of a uh, headway dual uh, microcatheter uh, that we navigated over a Traxxas uh, microwire. Uh, you can see how we're uh, advancing the microcatheter into the uh, region in the middle of the uh, arteriovenous malformation nidus. Um, we, after uh, obtaining the desired position, we did an uh, injection of contrast uh, of the distal uh, MCA branch. Uh, we checked flow initially to make sure that there's no contrast stagnation uh, and or uh, normal parenchymal blush, and then we injected uh, and did a DSA of the left MCA. There's a pacification of the arteriovenous malformation nidus draining through the uh, left uh, transverse sinus and, and sigmoid sinus. Uh, there's no evidence of normal parenchymal uh, blush. We, we, we decided it was a safe position for endovascular embolization. And uh, you can see the injection of onyx. Uh, we uh, started uh, uh, by injecting one milliliter of uh, lidocaine or 20 milligram, followed by uh, a total of 0 0.25 uh, milliliters of DMSO for the dead space of the microcatheter and then followed that uh, with the injection of onyx. We ended up uh, in injecting a, a total of uh, 1.8 uh, milliliters of onyx. It's important to note how uh, slow uh, we inject uh, the onyx. Uh, what we're looking for is uh, penetration into the nidus. Uh, we do not want the onyx to go into the venous side um, uh, this early into the injection given that uh, the feeders to the malformation are still patent and we are uh, continuously watching for any potential reflux of the onyx into the uh, microcatheter approximately. Uh, if whenever there's reflux like you're seeing uh, uh, at this point we stop the injection uh, to allow for, for the onyx to solidify uh, before we continue to inject uh, the, the adhesive material, cohesive material. This is a control angiogram showing that there has been significant devascularization of the arteriovenous malformation uh, at the end of the injection. And now it's, uh, we, we thought that it was a very appropriate uh, result uh, after embolization. You can see that now we're pulling the microcatheter out of the onyx cast. Uh, we uh, uh, perform gentle traction to remove the microcatheter. But you see how the DAC, the intermediate catheter, has tracked over the microcatheter all the way distally into the minocerebral artery. This uh, gives us more support to, to pull the microcatheter. That was the main reason for using the distal access uh, uh, intermediate catheter. Um, after obtaining a new mask, we relax the vessel, we advance the microcatheter again so that it regains the, the contour and shape of the normal artery, 
and uh, and allow the vessel to rest before we go back uh, to pull again with gentle traction. You're going to see again we strengthen in the vessel, and the distal axis catheter again uh, moves more distally. Uh, that helps us to be able to remove the microcatheter, and this is our control angiogram at the end of the procedure. Uh, showing that there has been significant devascularization with uh, residual arterial shunting and without venous outflow restriction. The patient went to the operating room and the uh, post-operative uh, uh, angiogram after resection demonstrated complete obliteration of the ADM without thromboembolic complications.